You can't master machine learning if you don't first master matrix operations, since as a data scientist, you'll use them all the time to transform your data. But did you know you can actually transform a matrix before it transforms your data? This is actually more common than you might think. So in this video, I'll guide you exactly how to implement these matrix transformations, and I'll show you how to avoid a classic mistake that many people make in these problems. After watching this video, you'll be able to handle these questions like a pro and ace them in your next interview or exam. And if you wanna get more such content, just subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. Let's dive in. So we're here at deepml.com and today we're going to do problem number seven, transform a matrix. Let's read the problem together. So here we need to write a Python function that transforms a given matrix A using an operation of T, which is also matrix, but we're going to invert it first multiply it by A and then multiply it by S. And this is how you do a matrix transformation. Unlike a vector transformation to transform a matrix, you have to multiply it by both sides. And here T and S are both invertible matrices. And the function should first validate if the matrices are invertible. We'll see how we do that in just a sec. And then we need to perform the transformation itself. And if we get matrices that aren't invertible, we need to return minus one. Did you ever encounter a situation like this where you had to transform your matrix by multiplying it by both sides? This is actually very common in physics, but it also happens sometimes in machine learning. Something I want you to pay very close attention to is inversion. So when you do matrix inversion, this should light up a red light and you should be very careful when doing this. Why? Because inverting a matrix is also extremely expensive. It's usually a cubic operation in terms of the size of the matrix and it's very error prone. You can have both visible and invisible errors. I'll explain exactly what that means in just a sec. Visible errors are pretty easy. This happens when your program just crashes where it says, listen, I had an issue. The matrix is not a square. Uh, it's divide by zero error, which we'll see exactly how you get a divide by zero error. And this will just crash your program and you know that your matrix is not invertible. The invisible errors are the errors you should be scared of. They won't crash your program, it'll run as planned, but you'll see that you get kind of crazy results. You start getting wacky values that are way too big, way too small, and this usually happens when your matrix is ill-conditioned, and that kind of has a more deep meaning of the eigenvalues or the singular values. We're not gonna get into that right here, but what it means is that it treats different vectors very, very differently. And when that happens, inverting can cause all kinds of issues, such as numerical errors, which are super hard to catch. I actually had a situation like this where my algorithm just never converged because a numerical issue in inverting a matrix. And I finally solved it using a regularization method, which I'll show you in a future video. But don't worry about these issues because in this problem, we're only going to deal with visible errors, meaning non-square matrices and divide by zero errors. So we're gonna to get to the code in just a second, but I first want to explain how you can get this divide by zero error, because it's not immediately obvious. You can get it by inverting this first matrix. And what does it actually mean to divide by a matrix? So what we do is we actually first invert the matrix and then multiply that by A. And inverting a matrix, you can see by this formula, we actually have a division by the determinant of the original matrix. And if this determinant is equal to zero, that's where you get your divide by zero error. So this is gonna be one of the conditions we're gonna check explicitly in our program. Okay, that's it, let's get into the code. 
So first, we're given a list of lists. All our matrices, A, T, and S, are all list of lists. So the first thing we're going to do is convert them into NumPy arrays. We'll do this for A, we'll do this for T, and we'll do this for S. Great, now let's do this check if our matrix is invertible. As we saw, we need to do this for both T and S. So we'll define this uh, helper function called is invertible. And it'll just receive just some matrix X because we're going to uh, plug in both S and T afterwards. So this is just gonna be a variable. Now, what we wanna see is we want to first check if our matrix is actually a square matrix because if it's not a perfect square, it won't invert. So what we're gonna do is we'll check if M is not equal to N. So if uh, what we wanna do is first find the conditions for something to be not invertible. So if this condition, if it's square, everything's fine. We're just gonna continue and we won't enter this if. And what is the second condition? We said that a matrix is not invertible if the determinant is equal to zero. So that's going to be our second check. Now it's very important to do this in the exact order over here, because if we first check if the determinant is equal to zero, but this is not a square matrix, so we're going to get an error over here. And that kind of defeats the purpose. What we want to do here is smart error handling. And here, if we get an error, that's uh, kind of defeats it defeats a point. So what happens if one of these conditions holds? If this happens, then our matrix is not invertible. So we'll return false. But if everything's fine, we'll return true. Meaning if M is equal to N and the determinant is not equal to zero, then our matrix is invertible. Okay, so let's use this helper function to see if both S and T are invertible. Um, so we're first going to apply this to S but although it really doesn't matter. And we'll apply it to T. And if any of them aren't invertible, we're going to return minus one. So we can use them right away and plug them into the formula that we were given for this problem. So the inverse of T times A times S. And that should be it. Whoops, so I had a little mistake here. I switched the order of T and S when converting them into NumPy arrays. And now I fixed it, so this should solve the problem. And it does, we pass all the tests. That's it for this problem. Remember the key takeaways here are to be very careful with matrix inversion because this problem is super expensive and error prone. We can have both visible and invisible errors. The visible ones will cause your program to crash if the matrix is not square or if the determinant is equal to zero. And the invisible errors happen when your matrix is very ill-conditioned, causing some outputs to shrink and other ones to grow very, very large. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and make sure to check out this next video where I show you how to invert a matrix in native Python.